Hey guys, Daniel here. Welcome to the Jeff Fuel Only channel. In this episode, we are installing a wideband O2 sensor along with a gauge and gauge pod in a 2016 CTS V Sport. Now this install is gonna be pretty much the same for all your third generation Cadillac CTSs, including the V, as well as the ATS and ATS-V, and probably a lot of similarities in a Camaro if that's what you're doing. So if you wanna know how you will install this gauge and gauge pod in your car so you can get to having your car properly tuned, keep watching. So as a reminder, air fuel ratio is super important. It's the ratio of air by weight and fuel by weight mixing together, go in your combustion chamber of your engine and the right mixture gets you the best amount of power. But a lean mixture, not enough fuel is gonna cause detonation, which is an explosive high pressure and high temperature explosion in the engine that's not supposed to occur and can cause engine damage. Having an accurate wideband O2 sensor sniffing your exhaust gases to determine what your air fuel ratio actually is in the combustion chamber is really helpful while having your car tuned. When tuning your car and doing logs during tuning, it's really important to pay attention to the air fuel ratio gauge and make sure the car's not running lean. Your tuner will use this information as well to get the most amount of power out of the car. We're installing the AEM Uego X-Series AFR controller along with a wideband sensor and this gauge pod available through ZZ Performance. It installs right into the defroster vent to the left of the steering wheel. And you don't have to install this gauge here. You can install other gauges in that spot as well, but it's really good to have that AFR gauge somewhere in the car. So we're gonna walk you through this. It's actually pretty straightforward. It's just gonna take a little bit of time. We're gonna run all the wiring and power up the gauge and such, but you generally need to go to an exhaust shop to have them drill a hole in your exhaust pipe and install the sensor there so you can get that accurate wideband sensor data. All right, let's get started on this install on Adrian's car. All right, this is the AEM Uego X Series AFR controller. In the box, you're gonna get a bunch of things. First, you have the wideband O2 sensor with connector. We're gonna mount that to the exhaust. How's that done? Well, they give you this O2 bung. The exhaust shop will drill a hole in your exhaust, weld this thing onto that hole, and now you can screw the sensor onto your exhaust pipe. You'll have this cable, which allows pass-through of your OBD2 information. That's really handy so you can still use your HP tuners while this thing's plugged in. And then the O2 sensor is connected to this cable, which you're gonna run up into the cabin and then into the back of the gauge. That's gonna give it that oxygen sensor data. This other cable connects to your OBD2 port and wires in for power. To install this gauge and sensor, you'll need the following tools. You'll want a pry tool like this one, that's the metal one, but you'll also want the standard plastic trim tool. You'll also want a 10 millimeter socket, a T30 Torx bit, and some way to drive them. I prefer my DeWalt impact driver. If you don't have one, you're missing out. You may also wanna drill because there is one part where we're gonna drill a hole in a piece of rubber. You want an electrical crimp tool uh, because we will be crimping on wire splices. And I suggest stainless steel zip ties. You can use plastic ones, but the stainless steel ones are gonna last a lot longer under your car. In addition, you should have a jack and some jack stands because we'll need to jack up the car and rest it safely on jack stands. Our pathway from under the car to the cabin is gonna happen underneath the driver's seat. So we need to move the driver's seat out of the way. Just pop this little plastic cover on the left side so you can access the screws. Use a T30 Torx bit to pull out that screw and then one on the right side. Now slide the seat completely back. The front does not have screws, but you might wanna remove this little plastic cover. It just slides. Be careful though, these rails can be sharp. Then just tilt the seat up from the back and slide it backward. You won't be able to move the seat very far because it's still connected to the car electrically with this connector. So we need to remove this connector. That purple latch, it swings over to the right side. But you can't do that until you move the red latch, which is sort of a lock. I had to fiddle with it a bit and I ended up just having the red latch fall off. I open the purple latch and pull the connector out. Now the wiring harness is held on here with a couple of retainers. I just pried those off with my trim pry tool. 
Now you can move the seat all the way to the back seat if you want, but please cover your leather. Like I said, there are some really sharp parts under there. It's nice to have a friend to help you out. You can probably get away with not moving the seat this far back, but it was definitely helpful to have it out of the way. Now we need to remove the threshold trim so we can get the carpet up. This just pops up with your fingers. It's in there with some clips. Now here there is a retainer. You'll want your trim tool to pry this retainer out. We hadn't removed the seat at the time, but we realized this was necessary. So go ahead and move the seat before removing the threshold trim. Then you can pry away the lower B pillar trim and lift the carpet up. Just do what you need to to get the carpet up. This is the air duct for the rear passenger feet. It just pops off of this clip right here. The wire you see here goes to the car sub, I believe. We need to remove this grommet here. This grommet hole is where our wideband sensor cable is gonna go through. Now don't drill a hole here like we did, but I'm just gonna leave this in the video because it's gonna be helpful so you can see that hole underneath the car and where it corresponds to the grommet hole inside the car. And now it's time to get under the car, so raise your car and support it properly with jack stands. Make sure you only raise the car at the designated lift points. See this? That's the hole we drilled. You don't need to do that, but we need to lower some of this felted underbody pan. Just gonna remove some nuts and bolts from the forward section of it. They're all 10 millimeter, and you just need enough to access all the way back to that grommet hole. Once you've removed enough bolts and nuts to your liking, you can flex it down to access that grommet hole. We need to run the cable through this metal part of the frame and then underneath the felted underbody pan. So I'm just gonna slide it in through one of the holes up top here, bring out this hole just to grasp it again, and then run it back through so I can continue the path underneath the felted pan. Route it up through the grommet hole and pull most of the wire through. However, you still need the connector all the way up here. See this thing? That's the catalytic converter. You need to mount it right up here with a zip tie. All we're doing is putting it there temporarily. I'm gonna put some electrical tape to protect the connectors. The exhaust shop, when you go there, is going to connect this to the O2 sensor when they install it. I don't weld, so I'm not installing the O2 sensor to the exhaust pipe. Make sure that it's zip tied far away from the catalytic converter because you don't want to melt it. Reinstall the nuts and bolts to the felted pan, and then I'm gonna drill a hole in the grommet big enough for the wire, maybe just a little bit smaller, because then I'll use a razor blade and cut a nice little X in it to give it some flexibility to expand, and then when it's tight around the wire, there'll be less chance of water and dirt intrusion. Thread the wire through your newly drilled hole in the grommet, pull all the cable through, and then reinstall the grommet in the floorboard. You can store the excess wire here under the carpet or preferably up near you where your feet go on the left side. Don't forget to properly reposition the passenger rear footwell vent. Now while your seat's out, this is a great time to clean there and get all those crumbs that you couldn't get before. And then we can reinstall the seat. It helps to have a friend, and again, be careful. First, reattach the wiring harness. It just plugs straight in and then move that purple lever toward the passenger side. I also reinstalled the little red lock clip. You wanna push in the retainers for the wiring harness. And then to install the front of the seat, you see how it's shaped here? Just dip the front of the seat downward and slide it forward. So dip the nose and dive it in. And then in the back, the holes should be lined up with the bolt holes. Reinstall your T30 Torx screws. Tighten the bolts to 33 foot-pounds. Replace the plastic cover. To finish the job, we're gonna put our B-pillar lower trim and threshold trim back into place. Don't forget to put the retainer back to hold the carpet down underneath of it. And then this plastic trim just clicks back into place. It's pretty easy. Your next step is to go to your local exhaust shop and have them install the O2 sensor. Adrian had his installed right behind the left side catalytic converter, and then they routed the cable away from the hot exhaust pipes, zip tied it to part of the frame, and then plugged it in to that connector that we left for them with the electrical tape on it. However, I do suggest you don't use plastic zip ties. We replaced all those with metal zip ties so they don't deteriorate, get brittle, and break one day.
We did this installation over two sessions and had the exhaust work done in between, but you could wait to do that for the end. All right, we are more than halfway there. Now we need to install our gauge pod so we have a place to mount the gauge. This is from ZZP. It's the little defroster gauge pod. It replaces your little vent to the left of the instrument cluster, and it still allows your heat to flow out of there. But it does come with a little bit of putty to pack in where the wire routes through so none of your car's heater is heating up the back of the gauge. You don't want that to happen. You want to block off that area. Inside the kit, you'll get some extra wire, some wire splices, and this little rubber band. You'll also need to buy a fuse tap. You can get them on Amazon. They usually come in larger packs or your local auto parts store might have them, but there's four different types out there. You need to get this low profile mini fuse type. And while you're at it, get an extra five amp fuse. If you can't find one, no big deal. You have some spares in your car. Start by removing the small defroster vent to the left of the wheel. Use a plastic trim tool to carefully and slowly pry from all the sides until it pops out. It may end up breaking and that's okay. If it does, you can always glue it back, but you're probably not gonna use it again anyway. Remove the fuse panel cover on the left side of the dash. Use your trim tool if needed. Now you can see here that the defroster vent has access directly to the side of this panel. And that's where we're gonna run our wires through is through any of these accessible holes up to the vent hole. Now the fuse tap wire, you'll definitely route right through here, but for the OBD2 adapter, you'll wanna pull up that threshold trim, move the carpet and access that bundle of wires we stored earlier and route everything from under the dash upward through this hole and then to the gauge pod. Of course, this is how I chose to do it. You may find a better way for you. Your main goal here is just to have the two white electrical connectors coming out through that vent hole. Like all electrical connectors, we need to ground one of the wires. Use your stripping tool to cut the wire to length and then strip off the ends. We need to attach an I terminal to the black wire. This is our grounding wire. This isn't quite the correct one for the gauge of wire, but it works for now. Uh, you'll want one that can get over this 10 millimeter bolt that I just removed and crimp onto the wire, which I think is a 16 or 18 gauge. Then install the bolt and now the system is grounded. You'll take the red wire and splice it together with the fuse tap using your crimp tools. Of course, there are other ways to splice wires together. I'll leave it up to you. Now, which fuse slot are we gonna get power from? Take a look at the diagram on the back of the cover. We're gonna use slot 26 on the CTS and ATS. It's for the wireless charger. Now, if you don't have a wireless charger, I don't know if this will have power. Either way, you need to pick one that only turns on with ignition and not while the car is off. So here's fuse 26. I'll pull it out with some needle nose pliers and we'll plug it in to the fuse tab. We'll also grab another fuse, either one that you bought or pulled from your spares and plug it into the other slot. Then just plug the fuse tap into the fuse panel. It needs to be oriented like this though. At this point, everything is all wired up and it should work when you plug in the connectors to the back of the gauge. So go ahead and do that. Turn on the ignition to the accessory position and see if it powers up. All right, that looks good. Let's move on. You won't need these little brass screws on the back of the gauge or the brackets, so just get rid of those. The gauge is gonna be fitted like this. Go ahead and run the wires through the back of the gauge pod. Plug them into the gauge again. And then with the little rubber band on the back side of the gauge to help pick up the clearance, you wanna stick it into the pod. Now set the pod kind of how you would have it, but don't insert it. It's not meant to be taken in and out. Twist the gauge until it looks like it's about the position you want it to be when it's properly mounted. Now grab that black putty that came in the kit and stuff it down into the back of the gauge to protect the gauge from hot air getting past the wires. Tuck away any putty showing and now we can mount the actual pod into the vent. Press it in carefully. Once it's in the right spot, make a small adjustment and this is how it should look.
All right, we're in the home stretch. It's time to put all the wires away and put everything back the way it's supposed to go. I'm gonna loop up all the wires and stuff them underneath the carpet on the left-hand side here. Just tie them up neatly and they'll fit fine under there. I did take the screw out under the left side of the dash here so I could lower it and then reroute some of the wires back there so I didn't have any wires showing once the OBD2 plug is plugged in. I'll put the screw back in and put the fuse panel cover back on. Lastly, you'll need to put that threshold trim back in place. And folks, you are done. You've now got a wideband O2 gauge. All right, that's it to installing the wideband O2 sensor and gauge, plus that cool gauge pod from ZZ Performance. Now, I think every person should be educated about what's going on with your car, so you should go out there and learn more about air fuel ratios and why it's important to your car and what your tuner's doing to your car. You can find lots of good info, videos on YouTube, and the HP Tuners Forum is a great place to learn about tuning as well, even if you're not the person doing it. All right, if you like this video, please show me, hit that like button, consider subscribing, hit the bell, and uh, that will notify you of future Cadillac content. Thank you so much for watching the Jeff The Only channel. We'll see you next time.